are a, a lot of Northeast Ohioans that are playing on the Chiefs and a lot of common threads between Kansas City and Cleveland as far as the football world goes. One that's been a little overlooked maybe is uh, John Dorsey. Dorsey helped build the Browns roster with some of the moves he made a couple of years ago, and he also was the architect of Kansas City when he was the general manager there. Uh, Andy Reid was asked, does he see some of the similarities between the two franchises and the two teams with John Dorsey's thumbprint on it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he, he did a nice job here and there, and so uh, of uh, bringing people in and they can play football. And, and, uh, and so you, you see that. And, um, you know, yes, I, I would say so I'd answer you yes. I, I could see that. Angie Reid talking about the thumbprint of John Dorsey on both the Chiefs and the Browns. Let's welcome in Dan Lobby. And Dan, um, you can certainly uh, see that with um, just the way this, this thing is built. Yeah, a lot of this team is, is sort of vintage John Dorsey. I actually think what I like about this team is you can kind of go back through, you know, with Andrew Barry now and then, of course, Dorsey. And, and even going back to Sashi Brown, you can kind of tie all these things together. To, to how this thing has been built. But Dorsey's thumbprint uh, is definitely on it because think of all the, the key players we've talked about. Kareem Hunt, you know, John Dorsey gave him his second chance. You know, I don't think we've mentioned Jarvis Landry yet, but, you know, he's going to be really, he's kind of the Browns version of Travis Kelsey for Baker Mayfield. He's, he's where he needs to be, and Baker knows where to find him when he's in trouble. Uh, you know, Dorsey went and acquired him. Denzel Ward, of course, Mayfield. You know, Wyatt Teller, a guy I mentioned earlier, we could, we could just kind of go through the list. And, and John Dorsey, you know, kind of the old scout from that Ron Wolf school, you know, he'll come in and, and he'll find talent. And he'll, he'll add a bunch of talent to your team. And, you know, the string might run out kind of quickly with Dorsey sometimes, <laughs> but when he's here, he, he adds guys. Yeah, without question. And it's, it's kind of interesting because Andrew Barry has done a nice job of not having to put his thumbprint on it and say, well, that. You know, that's Dorsey's guy. There hasn't been that with this organization. I think that's been one of the most impressive things about Andrew Barry, a young guy who had enough confidence, enough self-confidence, that he didn't feel like he had to get rid of Dorsey's guys. You know, we're going to make them my guys and figure out how to build this. Yeah, it just goes with kind of what we know about Andrew Barry. You know, it's not really all about him. It's about building this team the right way. And I also think it helps that he kind of goes back in that thread. You know, Sashi Brown brought him here, but he was with John Dorsey at the beginning before he left for Philadelphia uh, to work there for a year. So, you know, he kind of has all these different backgrounds, Andrew Barry does, and you know, going all the way back to Bill Polian in Indianapolis. And I don't think he, when he came in, he said, I'm not going to look at these guys as, you know, John Dorsey's guy, Sashi Brown's guy, my guy. I'm look, going to look at them as the Cleveland Browns. And to his credit, uh, he's really lived up to that and held that promise. And, and you know, you, you make a really valid point. He has some of the influences of some of the elite general managers. When you talk Polian, Dorsey, you know, Roseman over in uh, in Philadelphia. I mean, Andrew Barry got a PhD firsthand, you know, with the people he's worked with. And he's got that scouting background. I mean, he came into the league as, as a pro scout. I wrote a story about him uh, back when he first got hired. He, and he told me about sitting out in the cold at uh, First Energy Stadium because there were no there was no place in the booth for him, but he had to scout. He was doing some advanced work on the Browns' opponent. He had to scout him, so he's sitting out, kind of among the fans in the cold, doing this scouting. So uh, this is a guy that has that analytics background and, and certainly buys into a lot of that stuff. But he also has that scouting background, and I think it really helped him that he was here for a little while to, to sit in that film room with Dorsey and Alonzo Highsmith and Elliot Wolf and kind. Of for how they do it, and, and I mentioned this earlier, kind of going back to that Ron Wolf style uh, of unearthing and, and finding talent.